Kobe is a writer, fashion journalist, sustainable fashion and women's empowerment advocate. She aspires to inspire in all that she does, sparking stylish joy and gratitude in everyone. And that is what makes her the empowered individual that she is today. Hi guys and happy Independence Day. Uh, welcome to another episode of In Love With Me and this is where we feature inspiring individuals who will share their amazing stories. I am your host, Mafe Yunan Velasco and for this series, our topic is being empowered during quarantine. For this episode, we have an empowered woman, host of Grit and Glamour, also Rise and Shine, to motivate us to take action. So without further ado, Let's welcome the beautiful and amazing human, Ruby Veridiano. Hi, Ruby. Hi, Mafe. You're so wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Of course, and all the way from Paris, France, right? Yes, I've been living here now for almost seven years. I can't believe it. <laughs> wow. And it's been seven years since we were supposed to meet up in Manila. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. So, fun fact, guys, Ruby and I have known each other for that many years, but this is our first time seeing each other face to face. And, you know, and I'm grateful for her to be able to come in and inspire us today. So, Ruby, before we you share what you've been doing during this quarantine period, please share with everyone on how you are the amazing and empowered woman you are today. Oh, well, it's been a journey. It wasn't always like that. You know, like I, I don't think I was um, confident all my life, right? Like I think in my younger days, I struggled with confidence and I struggled a lot with just trying to find my place in the world and figuring out how I could um, really uh, take a step into my, the, the fullness of my power. But I think the, the journey has really blessed me with adversity. Um, adversity, I think, is one of the best teachers in our lives. So if you're going through something right now, um, I really, uh, at the time, right, when you're going through what you're going through, it doesn't feel fun and it's not pleasant at all. But without adversity, we can't grow. Um, so I think for me, um, living in New York, I lived in New York for three years. Mm -hmm. And those three years were very tough. If anybody's ever lived in New York, it's a tough city. It's a very, very, it's hard on the body. It's mm -hmm. um, you, you get a lot of doors closed on your face, but mm -hmm. all of that, the rejection, the, the the struggle, all of that really helped to polish the um, mm -hmm. kind of the inner light that I have. Mm -hmm. um, so growing from the failures, uh, I really do believe that failure is our greatest teacher. Mm -hmm. We learn more from our losses than we do our wins, mm -hmm. um, but it also helps us to really savor and really step into the victories when we do have them. And you have been such a light to a lot of women. Um, you are working on women empowerment as well as sustainable fashion. Please tell everybody about that. Yeah, so I've always... Um I've always wanted to use my voice to really touch uh, women, uh, just because, as I said earlier, I wasn't always confident, and I know I I had a lot of trouble believing in myself in my early days. And I grew up in the United States, where we didn't have a lot of Asian American or Filipino American role models. Mm -hmm. uh, when we look at the when we look at our books and uh, when we turn on the TV, we don't have people that tell our stories that help mm -hmm. us to kind of give us a roadmap of sure. what confidence is supposed to look like in our kind of in our own bodies and in our families and all of that. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to use my voice to really reach women and help them understand that no matter where they come from, their dreams are possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that spirit for me led me to the sustainable fashion movement because actually I realized that 80% of the women making our clothes are mm -hmm. women ages 14 and up. 
And these are the same women that are, that I want to empower, you know, and uh, those women are um, women who are um, in factories where they're not, they're disempowered every day. So when I realized that connection, I thought, you know, the, the fight for women's empowerment, the fight towards a more sustainable world is actually one and the same. And where did fashion start in your life? Like, where did you see that? Okay. I love fashion and everything about it. Oh, the women in my life, my mom, mm -hmm. my grandmother, her sisters, they mm -hmm. were all, uh, it's, and, and really like my matriarchal grandmother was always very elegant. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it didn't even matter. She would be going to church. She'd be at home. She was always very well dressed. And I mm -hmm. saw from a very young age that what we wear can actually have the power to share our story and who we are long before we even say a word. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, fashion has always been an inspiration for me, but I didn't think that I could work in fashion because in my earlier days, the careers in fashion um, didn't really have space for what I was truly passionate about. Um, I'm really passionate about social impact, mm -hmm. social responsibility, and I didn't think there was room for that in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I had to be a designer or work in PR or merchandising. Mm -hmm. But um, in 2014, or actually 2013, I got a surprise, unexpected assignment at Louis Vuitton in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And it was just a short term contract, but I learned through that experience that they have a social responsibility department. Mm -hmm. And I had gotten an opportunity to talk to one of the vice presidents of the company. Um, mm -hmm. I just kind of really snuck myself into his calendar. <laughs> um, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to be really bold. You know, you can't yeah. wait sometimes to like have somebody open the door for you. Sometimes you have to open the door yourself. So I, yeah. I stepped in there and I was bold enough to ask him if I could just have a 10 minute chat with him in mm -hmm. one of his coffee breaks. And he said that if I wanted to work in social responsibility for the company that I'd have to move to Paris. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think at the time he was probably kind of like saying that to me, but didn't really expect me to follow through on it. Mm -hmm. But being kind of the overachiever that I was, I said, okay, let me figure out how to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I ended up researching some programs that would allow mm -hmm. me to specialize in sustainability and social responsibility for the fashion mm -hmm. industry. And I found a program at the American University of Paris. And no joke, I within three months, my tr my life to Paris started. Like it wow. was I applied to the school mm. in September or October. I got accepted after three weeks. And by January of 2014, I landed in Paris. And mm. it was totally nuts, it was totally crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I just dared to believe that it could be possible. So I think, you know, if someone's out there and you have really big dreams and they're watching, I just want you to know that, you know, go out there and really give it your all, you know, right. and really understand that you have the power to design the life that you want. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope that I hope well, that's that how you got there. I always wondered. It's like, OK, Ruby was here and then now she's there. Yeah, okay, yeah. I don't know why she's really there. Yeah. But yeah, taking action and, and just claiming your, your dreams of coming true. Um, that's what you did. And now you've been there for seven years. And uh, so you attend a lot of fashion shows. Yes. Uh, you attended fashion shows in New York as well as now in Paris, of course. Yes. And what's the most memorable fashion show that you... you oh. Oh. <laughs> I know there's a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, my, my very first Haute Couture Week was... Mm -hmm magical it was mm -hmm. magical i mean even before because in paris everything is very traditional in new york things are a little bit more you know um digital you know you get your invitations on email and so forth mm -hmm. but at in paris especially during couture week you get the most elaborate invitations in the mail so you feel like you're cinderella and you're mm -hmm. going to the ball and when you finally, and I was very lucky and blessed to have been able to go as a fashion journalist at the time mm -hmm. I was uh, freelancing as a, um, a Paris correspondent for NBC News. Mm -hmm. So I had the opportunity to really access a lot of interesting parts of the show. Yeah. Um, and the people, the, the PR people were also very kind. I think if you want to work mm -hmm. in fashion, be kind, be friendly, yeah. develop relationships, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't matter who they are, be kind to them because you just never know. Um, mm -hmm. What doors can open and what doors you can open for someone else as well. But it was just, it felt like a fairy tale, especially being in the setting of Paris in the most, you know, luxurious settings. And I remember I just kept pinching myself because, you know, I'm 
from Sacramento, California. I grew up in a family of, you know, uh, an immigrant family, mm -hmm. uh, we had very modest beginnings. And um, I just kept thinking, oh my goodness, this is my life. This shouldn't have been my life. <laughs> But it is so. Mm -hmm. Again, well, I, I, I truly believe when you're doing good things for others, you know, you're rewarded tenfold. And since you've been that uh, powerful voice for women, I think that's the reason why your blessings are just, uh, you know, it became to reality the dreams that you claimed. Um, I agree with you know just taking action too and. Uh, Saying, saying kind, saying nice to the people around you because you just never know. You never know who you're talking to, right? You never know who um, is going to have a voice in like two or three years and then they will remember, oh yeah, I spoke to Ruby, she's great. I'm gonna hire her, right? Yeah. I think you would agree with this uh, also, Mafe. You know, the, the, the fastest way to your blessings is to also mm -hmm. be the blessing, yes. you know? bless someone else and mm -hmm. whatever blessings you share to others it somehow comes back to you and this is what i love about you you have so many um positive sayings uh <laughs> something that i just saw recently and that makes so much sense is about fear you spoke yeah. about something fear um what is it again what's the positive uh sentence that you you abbreviated fear Oh, um, I don't know if I said here, but I think maybe it was about adversity and failure. I think yes. that um, being in a that being having the opportunity to experience that kind of disappointment and pain, I think allows you to get in touch with your humanity, right? And you're able to develop that compassion and empathy for other people. Yeah, and I, and I love your your shows, your Rise and Shine and Grit and Glamour. Tell me how those two started. Well, Rise and Shine was kind of a short-lived project. Um, mm -hmm. I tried, you know, I think, you know, if, if, you're pe if people are creating video right now, I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that uh, actually one of the, you know, silver linings of quarantine is that it's allowed us new tools to really mm -hmm. create content. Because mm -hmm. for a long time, I was so self-conscious about creating videos because I don't have a, like, a big, I don't have a technical or editing skills. Yeah. So... <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, I felt like I was competing at the time with all of these people who had very <laughs> fancy camera tricks and fancy editing. And but I said, okay, I'm gonna I wanted to I wanted to find a way to share all of the wisdom that I've learned mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. um, because I think a lot of women feel like maybe they're alone in their struggles yes. or that you know, if they see someone, like, for example, if they see you, Mafe, they're like, oh, she must have been confident her entire life. And maybe <laughs> yeah. it, it takes a lot of, um, it's actually, it's a, it's a lot of hard work. You know, I think even happiness, you know, it can be joyful. That takes a lot of cultivation and a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to create these video series. The Rise and Shine was a, a video series that I tried to, like, to share my lessons. But again, like, I just felt so... Um, self-conscious about like the low quality video production mm -hmm. and la la la. So then now with quarantine, I said, you know what, like you, my priority is just, I want to share stories that make people feel hopeful. Yes. You know, uh, it's a dark and difficult time. Let's mm -hmm. figure out how we can bring light to other mm -hmm. people, like, exactly the way that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And fortunately with the quarantine, Mm -hmm. um, the live streaming has really been uh, more popular. Uh, people are interested in in tuning into live streams, but also there's a little bit more forgiving. People are mm -hmm. okay with having raw and honest conversations, and you know, just raw material. That mm -hmm. what matters is the the, the soul behind it. Yeah. So with grit and glamour, I really wanted to show the, the kind of messiness behind the process. Mm -hmm. We live in a social media culture. So what we see on social media is the end product, the mm -hmm. glamorous finish. But yes. people don't understand or like people forget that mm -hmm. to get to that glamorous finish, there was actually a lot of messiness, mm -hmm. a lot of grit that happens. Like, you know, you got your hands dirty, right? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to share some some honesty and truthfulness so that mm -hmm. when People feel like maybe they're not where they want to be. Mm -hmm. I can pull the curtain back a little and share the stories of thought leaders who, you know, maybe, you know, took it maybe like their their moment might have taken ten years. Right. So. 
I remember it now. So fear, you said, is face everything and rise. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I had to go find out. Like, I have to say this because it's so <laughs> amazing. Um, I like the fact that you took a somewhat of a negative word and, and, and shifted it to making it positive so that people can see that, you know, you don't have to fear things or fear someone. It's, it's really um, the challenge is yourself, right? I mean, you wouldn't make the big decisions if you didn't have, if you didn't believe in yourself. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I love it. Thanks yeah. for that. Ruby. <laughs> I just well, had to. I, 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 I had. <laughs> yeah. you, you, I'm sure, like you know, same goes with me. I've said a lot of things, and when people come up to me and say, "You remember you said that?" I'm like, "Ooh, which one? Which video?" <laughs> you know. So that's my favorite from Ruby. So, guys, please awesome. check Ruby's website and her YouTube. She has. Um, such amazing content there that can really boost your happy hormones right now. Um, I know just me from seeing that quote from her, it, it really made me feel like I could rise even higher. And it's true also what you said, like, you know, there's, there is a story behind the story. So <laughs> it takes practice. And, and also I agree, people are more accepting right now for raw and positive material because it's, it's about um, relating to others, relating to the feelings right now. Um, something that I wanted to possibly ask you aligned to what's happening. When you had uh, moments uh, where you, you were feeling unmotivated, let's say you're about to interview someone, how did you change your mindset to snap out of that negativity? Yeah, well, I, I, I am really lucky that I have a strong support system of women. I mean, the women in my life are really kind of my rocks, you know, and I think part of that is choosing wisely on who you let into your inner circle, because anytime that I feel like I'm having trouble, I reach out to one of my girlfriends and I ask them for advice and they reflect to me, you know, my strengths when I feel weak. So I think that's one. And then two, it's just really um, tapping into your inner, um, kind of your your inner greatness. Mm -hmm. And I, sometimes you just kind of have to stay still, you know, and close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And really also um, tap into why you're doing what you're doing, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, for example, I know that with this interview, it's not just a it's not just a conversation. It's mm -hmm. not like you're trying to like, you know, uh, create something just just mm -hmm. for the sake of creating it. Mm -hmm. The why I believe is like there's a greater purpose. You want to shed positivity. So tapping back into why you're doing something and the greater purpose behind your actions, I think helps to give um, helps to give me the push whenever I do feel fearful because I say, you know what, like. Um, the faith that I have in, in, in my purpose is greater than my fear. Um, mm -hmm. That is bigger than me. Um, mm -hmm. So I just have to stay, continue to stay strong um, and, and rooted in the purpose mm -hmm. of the work so that I can uh, go forth with a little bit more confidence. Yes. So during this quarantine period, is there something new that you've learned about yourself? Uh, well, let's see. Well, I, this is the first time in my adult, I work a lot, you know, like when I was in college, for example, I worked three jobs, you know, mm -hmm. I, and, and I grew up as an American, we're workaholics. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now that I live in Europe, it's taken me about seven years to kind of shed the workaholic, um, yeah. kind of skin, <laughs> but <laughs> for the first month of quarantine, I allowed myself to be lazy for the first <laughs> I want to bring something up because I did see something that we have in common. <laughs> Just from being workaholic ladies to letting something heal us. Yes. <laughs> Do you know what I'm the, the lazy, the laziness that I allowed myself to have actually gave me more energy. And a lot of times mm -hmm. people feel guilty about taking rest, at least for workaholics. You know, I think yeah. we feel guilty when we take a rest because we think that mm -hmm. maybe it's unproductive. But right. allowing yourself to rest, you know, I have a friend who always says, says, um, you know, you got to slow down to speed up right. and mm -hmm. I'm giving myself mm -hmm. the ability to just rest. I binge mm -hmm. a lot of K-dramas. Oh, my goodness. I think <laughs> I relate with all of the Philippines. I, am like, <laughs> what I learned about myself is that I'm a K-drama addict. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but you're not alone. Don't worry. 
So all I know the Philippines is like one of the largest hot spots for K drama fans. So if you all want to recommend some new K dramas to me, there. <laughs> but I did. Mean, I read your your testimony <laughs> blog about. <laughs> And you had that video of um, Captain Ree going in the, the airport. And I was like, I agree. I can watch this all day. <laughs> I, that I could be a K-drama fangirl. I never knew that. I mean, it, it's a, like I started following fan accounts. I don't know what's going on. I have K-drama support groups. But I allowing myself that moment to rest and also lean into this K-drama um, storytelling, actually. I learned a lot about storytelling. You know, yeah. I know it seems so silly to be obsessed with K dramas, but mm -hmm. it was, it's like the gift that keeps on giving because it taught mm -hmm. me how to tell. It it, it allowed me to um, understand how to be a better storyteller because there's a lot mm -hmm. of humanity I think mm -hmm. that's portrayed in K drama storytelling, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why I think we're so emotionally connected to it, right? right. Um, and actually, as I you know, one of my favorite ones is Itaewon Class. And yes. as, you'll, as, you'll, as you'll see in the show, there's a long process of adversity that he had to go through before he mm -hmm. actually got his victory. And this is like the theme that I'm talking about, right? In American mm -hmm. movies, we don't see the process that much. You know, like we love the underdog, but in American movies, I don't feel like they go very far into the actual process. It's kind mm -hmm. of like they, they get a challenge and then it's solved and then it's happily ever after. Mm -hmm. But what I love is like really sh sharing like, oh my gosh, like this mm -hmm. guy all through 16 episodes, like you got yeah. frustrated for him because he kept losing for a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the character, uh, Sayuri, you could see what a mountain mm -hmm. was on the inside. And the mountain I think had been built there through mm -hmm. what he went through. So mm -hmm. see, look at how deep came drama. <laughs> I get you. I'm there also. I mean, I doesn't agree, but like, you know, once he gets into it, he'll understand where I'm coming from. I mean, I had another friend, a close friend of mine, who's just like you, workaholic. Every time we have a conversation, it's all about um, business and, you know, how to make money and how to be a better businesswoman. And then she was just like you. She got into Korean drama. and. And I was shocked. I was like, oh, we can talk about another subject. <laughs> but it's it's true what you said. It, it heals. I guess it heals women. It heals people. Um, it's just, you know, you just have to get into it to understand. But yeah. I like that. I guess, yeah, it, You now you have a, a, a better glow in your life. Yes, because I allow <laughs> myself to rest and get joy. Mm -hmm. We got to refill ourselves, you know. And it's okay to just... You know, the, of course, we have to follow the rules. We stay home, yeah. and, and that's how we uh, protect each other. And, of course, at home, what, what are you going to do? You can work, but at the same time, you can also rest, right? So, yeah, with that, is there anything else that you have been doing? Have you been baking? Have you been working out more than before? Yeah, so I've been using this time as kind of like my creative residency and retreat program. <laughs> frame it, you know, because yes, we could call it lockdown or quarantine, mm -hmm. but sometimes it helps to call it something else so that it feels better in your body, right? right. So I started to call it the Ruby Residency and Retreat Program. Um, okay. Yeah. And what I, and I think what, what's been really helpful for me is just being very disciplined about my morning routine, which includes mm -hmm. for me uh, meditation and journaling and reflection. Um, mm -hmm. and, and prayer in the morning and then doing my workouts because I think that we really definitely need a multi-tier approach to our wellness. So part of mm -hmm. it is, you know, having your support system, um, you know, being able to you know, uh, activate the uh, serotonin or whatever, the, mm -hmm. the happy hormones in our bodies. Mm -hmm. And then also really kind of, you know, the inner mountain, you build mm -hmm. it by going inward. Mm -hmm. So I went inward a lot and just reflected and gave thanks. I, I really want to um, promote like that attitude of gratitude because I think yeah. sometimes we have a habit of seeing and recognizing the things that are going on wrong in mm -hmm. our lives. But, yes. when you, but when you actually give thanks and practice gratitude for the things that are going right in your life, I think it shifts mm -hmm. your, your mindset. It shifts your mm -hmm. energy. 
who were the influencers in your life? Like who were your mentors or people that you looked up to that helped shape you? Oh gosh. Um, well, a lot. So I have two, uh, I have two mentors that I've never met before, but they have <laughs> such a big, uh, part of my journey. Oprah Winfrey and Michelle Obama are like my heroes. You know, yes. so I really take um, tea from them. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, like, I just have, um, I have a mixture of intellectual mentors. So I have one of my professors is one of my mentors um, during my graduate program. Uh, she, mm -hmm. her name is Madeline Ziegler. She's a fashion, she was a former fashion journalist, been living in Paris for the last 30 years. She really mm -hmm. helped me get guidance. It's kind of like, the, I have intellectual mentors. But then I also have, um, you know, my uh, the the friends that I also soundboard with. You know, having mm -hmm. strategy sessions with. We need to support each other as women. I think you know, like especially now that we're isolated, we could find we could sometimes feel like we're doing it alone. Mm -hmm. And for people who are solopreneurs, for example, it can be really hard. But just surrounding mm -hmm. yourself with women who are also ambitious, who share your values, just being able to strategize and soundboard with them, my closest friends, those are mm -hmm. um, really key. And then I have spiritual mentors, um, mm -hmm. really people that I pray with, that I um, that I get wisdom from. And I call them when things get hard because I need mm -hmm. someone to help me understand. Like when you're in the thick of something, it's really mm -hmm. easy to just kind of feel like you're drowning in that anxiety. But yeah. when you kind of you know, when you have a mentor who is cultivating their inner wisdom all the time, they can help you retranslate or reframe the struggle and help you see the, the light in it. So mm -hmm. I hope that helps. I know I'm not specific, but definitely. No, I, <laughs> it, goes, it goes under the sun of surrounding yourself, surrounding yourself with positive people. And I think that, you know, uh, people that can empower you is, is, is very key because, uh, we need that positivity whenever we're trying to build, I guess, uh, your own empire in a way of inspiring others, mm -hmm. right? Uh, just like this campaign, it's about in love with me. So we have to take care of ourselves first before we can take care of others. Um, yeah. It doesn't mean that we cannot ask for help also. Um, yeah. Yesterday or even the life coaches I have interviewed, they would tell me they would have their own coach to coach them. Yes. I'm like, okay, that's... That's amazing because, you know, um, at the end of the day, successful people are not alone, really, no. if you think about it. Uh, so, okay, what else have you been doing to stay healthy during this time? I, well, I've been cooking a lot more at home. I have to admit, I'm not like the best cook, but I'm <laughs> learning so much. I learned how to make a few dishes that, uh, you know, I've been... I've just been trying to watch what I eat. The thing is, it's hard because I'm Filipino and I love rice. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to eat less rice. But I think just trying to, I, I'm taking a lot of vitamins, mm -hmm. um, working out regularly, mm -hmm. and trying to make my own food. I think mm -hmm. that has been a really kind of good health move just because mm -hmm. I get to pick what I put in my body and I know how mm -hmm. it's made. Um, so that, that's, you know, that's kind of one of the, things that I feel like I've done differently is cooking a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, so for the people or the youth or women that want to follow your footsteps, to have a, uh, a voice like you, or even um, take the risk of going to a, a, a new place, what would your advice be to them and what should they prepare? Most especially like right now, they have a lot of time in their hands. Um, what can they do at home? to make sure that when they have the chance to fulfill their dreams, they're ready. I think be very clear about what you want to contribute to the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I think some people, when they approach their careers, they think about what it is that they want to do. They think about the rewards. They think about the successes that they want to have. But I think the best question to ask is what problem do you want to solve? Right. I think the most effective business owners are actually uh, people who are creating solutions to some of our daily problems. So I think when you're understanding what problem you want to solve, you are tapping into your purpose. And when you are tapped into your purpose and you're intentional every day about finding a way to um, 
uh, execute that purpose in your own way every day, that's what gives you the fuel to keep going when things get hard. Um, I mentioned it earlier, you know, if you know what, what, why you're doing what you're doing, you have a lot more energy to get back up when you, you know, feel like you've fallen down because whatever it is that you're doing is greater than you. It's bigger than you. It's serving a greater good. So mm -hmm. when you're able to tap into that, I think right now, yeah, like know your why, you know, while you're at home and reflecting, try to figure out what problem you want to solve. And the big hint is whatever you're angry about, whatever breaks your heart, that's mm -hmm. the problem that you want to solve. So mm -hmm. um, be the solution. And again, you know, we talked about it earlier. It's like the, the best way, the fastest way to your blessings is to be the blessing. So, you know, what kind of blessings do you want to uh, share through the work that you're doing? Um, I think that gives you a lot more um, uh, fuel for the long journey because it is a long road. Success is a long road, you know, regardless of what you think about social media and things going viral, yeah. success is a long game. And I your purpose is what's going to prepare you for that long-term journey. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So in Paris now, um, you you guys are still on strict lockdown or what's, what's that? No. So we, we've called it a uh, confinement here. So we are officially deconfined. Uh, it's been about a little over three weeks now. Mm -hmm. uh, to be honest, it's a little bit worrisome because Paris mm -hmm. is a very small city with a lot of people in it. Um, and Parisians love to be outdoors, to like mm -hmm. put their outdoor coffees. Mm -hmm. uh, so it feels a little bit like we're back to normal, but there's still a virus out there. So right. I'm still doing my best to stay cautious. Mm -hmm. And and with that, of course, you know, there's something that we always miss. I mean, I'm sure you're mi you're missing the grind, the hustle and bustle. What would be the first thing? Or you've probably been out already, but when it's all said and done, what would be something that you miss that you want to do? Oh, I did it yesterday. Uh -huh. You know, very simple. Just having a cup of coffee, a little espresso on the terrace, which is the well, the outdoor terrace. Um, uh, if when people see pictures of uh, Paris, they see all the cafes and all the outdoor seating. I just miss the simple pleasure of being able right. to sit outside with a cup of coffee and a book. Mm -hmm. um, and that was just a nice, really, like, you know, what I learned also in Paris, and I think also I, I, I got amplified while I was in quarantine, is like just being um, mindful of all the simple pleasures of daily life, right? Like having a cup of coffee, you can choose to really be present in that moment of taking your coffee and really enjoy it and be grateful for it. And um, having those little moments, I think, re-energize re you throughout the day. So that's what I got to do yesterday. I got to sit outside and have a cup of coffee. <laughs> that sounds nice. So do you speak fluent French? Um, I do now, yeah. I mean, I mean, fluent is subjective, right? Like I <laughs> came here with zero French, yes. and now I can have a meaningful and full conversation in French, so. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> well, I, know I, I tried, but I was the only one in high school that took up French. So I was like, okay, who am I going to talk to the teacher? But yeah. yeah, I respect people that can speak French. Oh, so, language. <laughs> so before we wrap up, Ruby, I know that um, people are inspired by you right now, but please share um, maybe an additional words of wisdom that you can uh, boost everybody's um inspiration and their positive mindset, especially at a time like this. Sure. My favorite thing that I like to say is um, when in doubt, go in and not out. You know, I think sometimes we seek for external um, signs that we're going in the right direction or we're looking for external things that validate, you know, um, what we're feeling or what we're doing. But I think go inward, you know, reflect and figure out what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want to bring to the world and um, and and really cultivate your inner intuition and trust in yourself. I think a lot of times what happens when we're trying to um, move forward to a new chapter in our lives, we don't trust ourselves enough. So go mm -hmm. inward and cultivate that trust that you have in yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe lastly, a uh, question from online. What is your favorite style or maybe your favorite? Yeah designer or Ooh, okay my favorite designer is actually christian dior 
Mm -hmm. um, he is um, obviously a very, very um, famous designer. Mm -hmm. But what I love about him was that his the feminine silhouettes, I'm very girly, you know? <laughs> I really, really like that classic uh, feminine silhouette. And I know that with him, he really sought to make women happy. He wanted to make dresses that made women happy. And I think was one of the interesting things that people don't realize was that Christian Dior, he, he came, he, he rose to fame at a very particular time. It was right after the war. Mm -hmm. During the war, um, sorry, I'm just gonna share a little Paris fashion history because yeah, cool. I'm a big fashion history geek. Yes. Or like fashion history geek in general. Like history. Go ahead. <laughs> so the context with that is that, you know, during the war, people didn't have a lot. Uh, they were rationing a lot of things, including clothes. So mm -hmm. people were wearing, you know, grays and, you know, black, clothes, very dark clothes. And they were, again, they were rationed. So you only were able to have a particular um, uh, 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 type of uh, clothing in your home. So Christian Dior came through at the end of the war and he taught people that it was okay to be beautiful again. It was okay to feel joy again. So I think in a lot of ways, right, like right now we are in a dark time, but continue to access joy. It's still okay to access joy. Mm -hmm. So that's a little tidbit that I like about Christian Dior. But if it's about style a specific, is, is a question more about like my one specific thing that I like that I keep in my style essentials? Your favorite style essential. Okay. Um, a good bag. I think uh, a good bag, not a bag that um, it doesn't have to be name brand, but it does have to be of good quality. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that can hold the things that you love in your life. But it's a staple. You know, a, a bag is really an investment piece that mm -hmm. will carry with you for years. And hopefully if it's that good of a bag, you can pass it on. Mm -hmm. So I think a nice, a nice sleep bag is a, a, gr a great style essential. I love that. You know, um, I love the fact that you shared history because uh, to me, I love history because it's something that uh, the youth most especially needs to learn um, apart from just knowing the brand name or yeah. or just the name of a person. So yeah. I'm glad that you, you voiced that out. And that's what you should be doing right now. You should have a history lesson on fashion. For <laughs> yeah. that's I'll put it I'll put it in my uh, to do list. <laughs> No, because it, it, I think that's where, um, especially the youth, have more of a respect to designers. Because to me, as a uh, you know, I've uh, experienced modeling and just meeting designers and the way that they create their garments or their bags. It's from the heart. It's like their eyes really glow when someone wears it or someone purchases it. So I, I see that side of of. Uh, what a designer feels and for sure for you you know um interviewing all the women that have been uh uh in the factories and things like that i know that's for for their families so there's another uh part of the story on the clothes that we wear um, and i have to also uh give credit to my designer um she is a filipina mom um you know she created these garments which is uh the material is like the you know the garter type so you can just throw it in your luggage. You don't need to press it. You don't need to um, iron it. So I really appreciate that. Um, Aubrey, that's her name. <laughs> so I'll share her her um, link there as well as Ruby's website, guys, and her social media. If you have any more questions or you want to ask advice on, on anything that she spoke about today, uh, I'm sure Ruby is more than happy to answer that. Um, I really appreciate everything you've taught us today. And most especially, I'm going to say it again, face everything and rise. That is by Ruby, guys. So um, that's something that I'm always going to share with everyone and possibly on my post because that's something that people need to hear, most especially right now. So with that, actions speak louder than words. And thank you guys for tuning in in another episode of In Love With Me. Thanks, Ruby. All right. Thank you for watching and love of me series.